All right. Hello and welcome to the Cubicle Liberation Podcast. I'm Joshua Fletcher. I go by Fletch. I'm here with David Hood. And today we are going to talk about a simple but very powerful framework for making sales on the internet. It's a, a big mystery to a lot of people in a lot of ways. And one of the main things that we want to do today is to help you understand it and see some of the moving pieces and really kind of be able to drive it into your head in a way that when you are working on putting together your offer on the internet, whatever that might be, you've got some structure and some framework and some guidelines to help you think about the right stuff and not take yourself out of the game before you've even got started. So, um, David, how are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. I'm excited to go into this. I think that this is going to be really powerful and it's going to make you understand a lot of times people go out there and they kind of have random success and random failures and they don't really know why or what happened. And this is going to really help you level up your skills in terms of sales and conversion much faster because you're going to understand a lot more of what it really takes to, to get that yes and to really get the buy-in from somebody. And there's some really powerful concepts that I'm excited to talk about today. That's awesome, man. So it, it, to start things off, right, to, to contextualize a little bit, you're, you're going to understand what that means later on. Um, this framework and kind of really some of the structure of it uh, is something that I learned from a man who built a business online that's done over $50 million in sales with something less than $1,000 of investment at the beginning over the course of seven or eight years. So this, this is not something we just pulled out of our butt and it's like, it sounds good and so you should follow it. This is something tried and true that really, really works on the internet that I use to inform all the stuff that I do, but it was developed by a man named David Mills, who again, built a business that has done over 50 million in sales with very little investment overhead. So, um, as far as a qualification goes, this is something you should pay attention to because it works and it works recently. It works on the web and, you know, kind of aligning with that, there, there's a lot of people who would like model the behavior of somebody um, that has done a lot of sales on the internet, but doesn't really know exactly why they did it. Right. And so what that points to is needing to have a, a framework that's duplicatable and replicatable and really includes the essence of what's necessary to get somebody who has just seen your page, right? Has just seen your offer to a place where they can say yes. Right. And so the, we're, that's what we're going to be talking about today. So if you stick with us, um, we're going to cover, it's really simple, right? It's like kind of four elements. There's a couple pieces in each of those elements that you want to pay attention to. Um, but David, do you have anything else to, to kind of lead off with before we get yeah, going? One more, one more quick thing about understanding your way to victory here, which is that there's a lot of really random ways that a sales, a sales process can go. And by understanding your, and, and having a framework, when you are encountered with these an unlimited amount of unique scenarios, you know what to do, or you have a much higher chance of success because you have a really simple framework to apply to it as opposed to being like, oh, they said this. How do I respond to that? You don't even, I've never heard a question like that. Well, if you have a good framework like this, then you can respond like in the moment and in a, in a way that, that sets you up for success even better. So yeah, let's get into it. I'm excited. Yeah, David, no, th th what you said right there, we, we talked a little bit before we hit record today. Um, what, what David kind of mentioned, I want to really draw attention to is like, Winning big on the internet once is awesome, right? But unless you really manage it perfectly, you're going to have to win again and again. You're probably going to do some things wrong. You, you spent all your money, whatever it might be, right? You want to be able to go into each scenario, each situation, calmly collected and be able to apply what you know to the situation you're in. You don't want it to just be luck. Right. And there's a lot of people who get in and they kind of get lucky the first time they make a bunch of money. Then they think they know what they're doing next time around they flop, right? I don't want people to fall into that, that category. So um, that's one of the big reasons that I wanted to kind of open this up and, and share what I know about it and my experience with it. So um, really to give you a preview of what we're doing, we, we, we talked about four things, right? Um, the four things are having a clear offer, right? 
in a way that stands alone without broken windows, right? Broken windows being things that take you out of the game. And then from there, add context, right? And some other ways to understand the essence of what you're really talking about and doing. So we're going to get into each of those and talk about why they're important, why they're necessary to be able to um, um, reliably get a sale with your offer. So ah, clarity. Clarity is a big Wait, one. But, yeah, go ahead. Fletch, before we yeah, yeah. jump into that, I want to talk about what you came up with, which is sort of like a little bit of a higher level of that. It's really yeah. super simple, which yeah. is the vision and the justification. Now, these four things can all be put under one of one or both of these. And I think that the vision, I want to talk real briefly before we get into that about the vision and the justification. And then I think, then I think it makes sense. Well, for me, I would want that first. Cause I think the vision is the, the idea of these two things. If this is all you get, that's so, that's so powerful. Yeah. So, yeah. No, no, I'm glad you brought that up because it's really, it's, it's not as much of an organizing principle, but I think we can all look inside of our own experience, right? Our own memories and think of a thing that we've wanted and then what we did to go about making a decision to say, I'm going to go get that deal, right? And what that kind of, I say it boils down to, right? This is something that I've done a lot of mental work on. I've really looked at the way my mind functions, the way I behave. And it started with, with really a vision, like a thing that I wanted. And whether that thing was a knife or that thing was, the feeling I have when I'm on a beach with my wife or the, you know, the, the feeling that comes along with, you know, um, being able to sleep peacefully at night because I've got my finances handled or whatever. It was a vision. It was a thing that was like, oh, yeah, that, that I want that. I want that thing. Okay. So that's the vision piece wanting something from there. It's like, yeah, but what would it take? Like what, what would it take for me to know that the, the, the course of action that I was um, setting out on was going to be sufficient and correct and efficient to get me to the point where I can be sitting on a beach with my wife or my whole family enjoying the thing, right? And if I can't really justify that, learning search engine optimization or learning paid ads or learning email copywriting or whatever it might be. If that was not going to be able to take me all the way to that vision, I kind of disqualify whatever that offer might be mm -hmm. from what I'm considering doing to get that vision. I still want the vision, right? Yeah. But this offer now no longer is, is sufficient for me to say yes to, to say, I, I need, I, I, I want the vision this is something that will either take me all the way there or I need it as a component of something that will get me all the way there. And, this and is that's really what we're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. This is directly applicable to a lot of how Fletch and I have made sales with regards to client stuff. You have to paint a vision to them of something that they want. And if you don't do that, if you don't give them a clear vision, like clarity is one of those things that's part of vision. Uh, and then you, if you don't give them a clear vision, of what it is that they're, that they're trying to accomplish, what, what's kind of like the end result is, they pot at the end of the rainbow. And then if you don't give them sort of a justification, which is sort of like heart and then mind to rough estimate, uh, then it, you're not gonna make the sale. And so these, these are two different kind of frames you can look at the next, for the four pieces that, that Fletch already mentioned. Um, I wanna, we're gonna come back to them, but I think it's a really good, Fletch came up with, with this, these two things. And I think it's really, really simple, I especially really like the concept of vision. That's like your first objective in making a sale to somebody is you have to paint an attractive vision to them, especially a high end product. Yeah. Maybe if it's like a, like a pen, you don't have to paint this super vision, but if you're selling something that's a, like thousands of dollars, they're going to need to have a very big vision. There's going to need to be something that's like, Whoa, that's really, I'm really excited about that. Yeah. And this, this is kind of something that fits in with um, like copywriting even. You know, when you're thinking about what you're going to put on your sales letter, you've got your headline. That headline needs to, needs to align with vision, right? It, it, it needs to, to help people orient themselves to, to staying the course and getting through the rest of your sales letter or your video or whatever it might be. That's one of the reasons we introduce, we try to, right? We introduce, we're at least aware of introducing the concept of the vision early, 
right? And then, and then keeping it consistent, mm. continuing to remind people where this thing is heading, what, like what they can find as far as like the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, right? And then it's like, well, now let's talk about how you navigate a rainbow. Yeah. So, um, which may or may not be possible. Again, I'm opening a loop here that we'll need to close later. We'll talk yeah. about how that kind of works and what you want to do to make sure that you don't um, over explain and, and over sell something that normally would be very direct and easily uh, communicatable. So kind of getting back into that first element, clarity, right? Clarity of vision. Um, so one of the things I, I would start talking um, about here is that there, there are folks, I'll start talking about what this is not, right? My brain tends to go toward, okay, so where are these dead ends? What is, what is this thing not? Okay, so what we're talking about here is not story, right? The clarity piece really has to do with the exact deliverable of your offer, right? So if you're selling a, um, a flint and steel type of fire starter for survivability in a post-apocalyptic America, who wants the ability to start a fire with no other tools when they need it, right? That, that's a, a clear vision, right? It might include other things. It may include, um, like, what, what this really comes down to is making sure that you understand your offer, and what it does. So let, let's get back into SEO because I, I sell some of the other stuff on, on the side, but we're talking about SEO primarily in this podcast. So with search engine optimization, who wants to be seen as their market leader in whatever space they're in, right? That, that's what going to Google, Google being the, the largest company on the planet in this regard, as far as what's important. Um, who wants Google to say you are the best at doing plumbing repair in Phoenix, Arizona, right? That, that is a very clear idea of what search engine optimization means, like that a lot. right? It's not what it really does. It's not all the nuances of SEO, this and that. But do you want one of the largest companies on the planet that's very trusted to say that you are the best at what you do in your market? That's the clarity of how I communicate my offer in a lot of what I do with search engine optimization in my agency, right? You can, you can um, put that on a, a lot of different scenarios, but with that one, it's easy for me to communicate because it's something I do almost every day. I do include some other things, but that's clarity, right? There are people who will get almost all the way toward, I really want that with just that piece, right? I really want a massive company that's trusted to say I'm the best. But there are some things that come after that to let them justify that you're the one to do it, like that, that you can do it, that you will do it, that all the other stuff that they're gonna get questioned about, those are the other elements that are gonna come into play later. But let's talk about clarity a little bit more. So, um, some of the examples of other kind of success methodologies that include, include clarity, right? Or like a vision board, right? If you've got a vision board and you put a picture of a Lamborghini and a big mansion and a beach house and uh, you know, $10 million or whatever it might be, that's one of the things that helps your mind, your brain align with the vision of that Lamborghini or that perfect spouse or that mansion or that money, right? It's going to continue to be clear in your mind. If you've got a big vision board on the wall, you're going to have to continue to get pulled more and more toward that. That's clarity, right? Um, the process of writing down your goals, right? You can go to a workshop. Tony Robbins has been big on this. Um, Tony is somebody that I've uh, studied a lot, listened to a lot of his things. Um, almost all of his audio programs that I've listened to include a segment on writing down your goals. Why is that important? Because it, it clearly defines what you want, right? Is it the way to get there? No. 
I don't necessarily directly know how to go buy a helicopter or a mansion in, in, in Aspen or something like that. But if I know I want it, I can figure out how to get there, right? And so most of what this is about, as far as clarity goes, is, is creating enough tension between you know, where you are and what you want, that that energy is gonna be something you can direct toward activities that will take you there, right? And so within a sales letter and conversion copy or whatever you wanna do with it, like it, whatever you wanna apply it to, whether it's direct sales or um, copywriting or uh, video marketing or whatever it might be, you need to make sure you establish that vision of what this is about. And if you do that clearly, you're going to also not create a situation where somebody says, oh yeah, I really want that mansion and I want that you know, 6% body fat and I want that spouse and all that great stuff. But what you're selling is not going to take me there, right? And so that's why you really need to be clear and specific about what this is. This is kind of talking about David. Would you you want to jump in real quick? And yeah, kind of- sure. Um, I I was thinking about this some more, and I think that the clarity is beyond just the vision. I think it's also you have to be clear about the justification. And so I was thinking about uh, like you want the attractive result. I feel like that's kind of for the most part step one. You want them to want something that you can offer them, but then also it's really helpful to, uh, to also kind of like, okay, well, what's the first steps? So be clear on what it is that they're, what you're offering them. Cause you're not, you kind of are offering them the attractive result, but you're also offering them like the steps along the way, like what exactly is going to happen. So being clear on like, okay, here's exactly what you do to purchase. Here's exactly what will happen immediately after you purchase. And here are the next steps that you can expect the giving people like kind of demystifying how things are going to happen. I found for me is helpful in making sales with clients or with like an info business. Um, And I try to be really open with what, what I'm going to do and not going to do. And a lot of people try to think, well, you know, they're going to, if you tell them exactly what you're going to do, they're going to be like, Oh, that's it. Um, But actually I think that when they, when they have the clarity of seeing what to expect, it, it, it reduces the risk to them to some degree. Um, and, but also I think that being clear on like the next steps does help with justification because it makes it seem more real and makes it seem more practical um, and make, which makes them easier to justify. So uh, back to what you said, like the, the kind of like the main first thing is being clear on a vision. And if you can't do that, if you can't paint a tr- an attractive result in terms of like something, which is like another way of saying it, like a vision, that they want, there's, they, you just, there's no, there's nowhere else for you to go. There's like, the, then you fail. Like they, 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 if they don't want it, I mean, why would you buy something you don't want? Like you have to want it pretty much. Somebody has to want it, right? Maybe your wife wants it or something. I don't know. But uh, then it doesn't, it just doesn't work. And clarity, clarity, and just making sure that, th- that there's a, as much understanding of what it is as possible is really useful. A lot, like I've sold things in the past um, and still now I, I take a lot of this approach, which is just like, here, this is exactly what I have to offer. And I just give as much detail. This is why you should listen to me. This is who I am. Try to be as clear as possible. And a lot of times that works. If you just present people with like, this is what I have. You just describe it like on, it, think about like on Amazon, uh, when you go to buy something, like the, one, the, the ones that have like a bunch of pictures from a bunch of angles, those are going to sell better than ones that just have like one picture from one angle, right? Because, well, assuming it's a good quality product and the, ang- the other angles are, are reasonable because it just gives you more clarity. It helps you understand what it is more. So this is so important. That, that opens up a, something we're going to talk about in, in kind of each of these four elements, which is y- you really want to stay, you want to get into and stay in a category in, in your prospect's brain of natural, mm. right? Um, natural would be like, Okay, so the opposite of natural, again, I go back toward that, right, is, um, you know, some bikini clad model standing in the middle of a, 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 a battlefield, you know, drinking a, a slenderizing tea, right? That doesn't quite add up. That, that's like, mm, this doesn't, okay, buying the slenderizing tea in the battle, 
Like there's a whole bunch of stuff going on here that just makes me kind of scratch my head. It takes me out of immersion, right? This doesn't quite seem like it all adds up. You want to try to stay natural, right? With your clarity, if people can make money on the internet, so can you. Okay, now you're natural, right? Um, it, getting out of that category, you don't want to do. You don't want to do that in, in, um, in any of your, your sales copy or your sales process or whatever that might be, right? So that's going to come up again several times as we talk more and more about this. But, but natural is, is really the place you want to stay. Mm. So, and being very clear helps you stay in natural. In natural because you're, there's not as much ambiguity and vagueness that would potentially let your prospect – right? The potential buyer say, well, this, this person's not like me. This person's not like anybody. Yeah. Like this, per this person is somebody that I really can't relate to as much. And so in this, we'll kind of open that up being relatable and, or making your offer and product relatable are going to yeah. be things that you want to make sure that you do. Right. Yeah. I feel, I feel like it falls under clarity, but probably more of a broken windows thing too yeah. right because yeah. you're yeah these these kind of do intermingle right we want to talk yeah. about them um topically right from very as clear yeah. and top um kind of top down looks but they all work together so yeah. let's um, talk about standing alone yeah so standing alone is is really what if you've listened to or heard a lot of people talk about business they talk about your brand they talk about um you know, the, the, the way that you're distinct from other offers in your market and, and that really being the key, right? So it's a key and it's something that you can do in a lot of different ways, but you want to be mindful of it because it's something that you have to do to be able to get somebody to buy from you. So let's kind of pull that apart and look at some specific elements that are related to, um, to, to really standing alone in your marketplace. So, um, so one of the ways to stand alone is if you're the only person selling this thing, <laughs> right? So that's the, I say the easiest way that might be the hardest way, but if you have that, you, you don't have to continue to work on it. You just have to clearly relate to the person. Hey, I'm the only pe uh, agency that offers search engine optimization. And um, what, one of the things I'm working on right now, ADA accessible websites. If you want to buy those two things in one place, we're the only agency that does that. So, that, that was a way that I could get my offer to stand alone. Still got to do all the other stuff to get the business working, but I stand alone now. So like with branding, and I used to partner with a, um, a guy that was really big into this and we kind of built a branding agency and it helped me really understand how much of this, um, like how deep you can go with it. Um, Agencies and, and companies that are really, really big on brand and that put a lot of effort and work into brand tend to be in cluttered marketplaces. So if everybody is selling a cheeseburger, you need to be distinct in that, in that marketplace, right? And, and some way to do it, it may, you may be buying the exact same meat and bun and lettuce and everything else as your competitors do. And so you've got to almost concoct an image, right? A, a, a way for people to see you as different in that marketplace because your actual product, your burger is not really that different than 10 or 12 other people who your customer might be able to buy from at any given point. So if you're finding yourself only being able to find distinction with a brand, right? The things you believe in, the things that are important to you, where you draw your boundaries. Oh, I would never buy, um, you know, feedlot beef, or I would never buy uh, lettuce that's not organic and free from GMOs or whatever. If you're having to go to those places, it's likely, it's likely that your product is really not that distinct from anybody else. And you're having to really define yourself in, in your prospect's eyes, in your, in your um, potential buyer's eyes, on these kind of surrounding areas that are not really um, the core of what you do. That, it's not to say it doesn't work, right? Coca-Cola, Pepsi-Cola each sell a ton of soda. Hmm. 
but they're very similar, right? They both come in a can or a bottle. Um, they're both cola flavored, which I, I, I don't even know what the hell a cola flavor. is. I think it's a nut, right? <laughs> I think a sugar is. It? Fizz. Yeah, it might be. lots of sugar. Yeah, lots of sugar, lots of fizz. It's convenient, it's cheap. So if you find yourself in a situation where you're getting really wrapped up in what's my brand before you're selling your thing, you may not ever even have to go there. You can sell a ton of product if your product is unique. If your product, I say unique, if your product stands alone, meaning it's either convenient, it's cheaper, it really gets the job done as far as getting that vision accomplished for your buyer, whatever it might be. So I like to start with low hanging fruit in this area. If I can find a way where my offer, the, the thing that my product or service if that really stands alone in a certain way, I don't worry about brand at all, right? Brand is not important at that point. To a lot of small businesses, brand is not that important. Uh, it's not that important. It doesn't need to be that important. You don't have to put a ton of work into your brand to make sure that your offer actually sells, right? Um, so let me read through some of these notes. So um, yeah, with all the brand stuff, aligning with your brand, um, rather aligning with the brand of the type of, okay, so, when people do work on branding, they will go through some kind of workshop worksheet process of figuring out like who they are, what they really care about, what they're not, what they don't care about, or what they really push against in a way of kind of defining yourself. Um, what, what's actually a little more important than that, or at least equally important, is understanding that there's a market of people that you can relate to who feel the same way, right? And so in this way, like attracts like. If you are able to describe your product in a way where somebody really aligns with it and says, oh, that's like me as well. That's really what, that, that's the essence of what you need to get out of this, this process of standing alone in your marketplace, right? Um, there are certainly people who teach branding that say that's all you need for conversion, right? The first thing you do with your company is create a brand and create and like carve out this, this place you stand and then people will just be drawn to you because of that. Um, not really true. Uh, it can be true. It's not always true. So in crowded marketplaces, if you can do that and you have enough money to spend on getting in front of people, it really can draw a lot of people towards you, right? But with small, it, one of the reasons we do this podcast, right? We're, we're really trying to help out people who are starting and beginning. If you're just starting out, that's probably not a place you want to start trying to carve out a piece of branding in an established marketplace, right? That, that's get your offer, get traffic to it and make sure that you get conversion, right? Which are um, the, the first two elements we've talked about here and then two more elements and you should be in a really good position to be able to sell, right? I would say, I would say brand is something you would want to consider, but not like spend oodles amount of time and energy and resources on. Right. Well, so I... going back, like talk more about um, Dallas SEO Geek, right? Yeah, Can that's, uh, I, I did. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that because I was wanting to talk about that. Um, so when I got started, so I, I think the brand is a subset of standalone. So when I got started, I am a computer geek. I have been a computer geek for a long time. So first of all, branding myself as a geek was a natural thing because it just kind of came natural to me. Uh, but also it was unique. I looked at the, uh, all the other companies that were ranking um, for Dallas SEO. And I thought about, okay, how can I present myself differently than them? It was really, in, in, and I just, Dallas, I wanted to rank for Dallas SEO, having your main keyword in your, in your brand name, it's helpful from an SEO standpoint. And so I thought Dallas SEO Geek, it was a very brief process. I, I, didn't, I didn't go do you know, $10,000 studies. I didn't spend a month in the mountains thinking about it. I just like, okay, this, this fits. I didn't, it, it fits well enough and, and, I, and I ran with it. Um, there, were, there were some other, I think I got a little bit, I don't, I don't know, lucky or whatever. It, wor it worked out even better than I had hoped it would work out. Um, and it definitely differentiated me because in, in, in a lot of different ways. So a lot of the agencies uh, that I was competing with are what I would call like an all, all agency where they provide um, all digital marketing services to all different niches. 
I decided to be a specialist, which differentiated me. Um, and some people want big agencies that provide all the services. And, but some people want smaller um, ex, ex, uh, specialists to do something to do SEO for. In fact, a lot of times there's agencies that recognize that SEO is very complicated. They, don't, they do everything but SEO. I've actually worked with several agencies like that that have given me their SEO work. Uh, so I feel like I stand alone in a, in a very unique way. There's not, at least when I create, there's some other people who've come along and have branded themselves similar to me in Dallas. So there are some people now, but by and large, it's still pretty, pretty much like most people want to be all things to all people, which I really recommend against and is kind of part of the standing alone. So like what I would really do if I were to start over, what I would be do like a niche specific SEO agent. So I'd go even more, uh, committing to kind of an us versus them, st- drawing a line in the sand on who and like w- what it is I'm, I'm going to service. And this is less of a branding decision and more of like a business structure decision. And But what it does, it really makes me stand alone. So if you imagine if I'm doing, if all I do is do um, SEO for, uh, f- let's say for electricians, that's all I do. So that's going to, re- there's, I would be surprised if there's more than a, if there's even a handful of companies out there that present themselves like that. It's going to immediately make you stand alone. Uh, and one of the kind of things that you really, kind of the results that you want to get of this, that you mentioned this, this is not for me, this is from Fletch, is you want to take up space in people's brains. And if you are just like everyone else, it's really, really hard to take up space in people's brains, especially, at least if you peer, like I feel like my SEO offer is very different than what other people's offer. But to, to me, not necessarily to other people because they still think a oh, rank on Google to them. It appears like the offer is very, very similar. And back to like this concept that I really, I really believe in. And that has, I think has been proven. I've proven to myself very strongly, uh, which is sort of like the, the distinction between being lukewarm to a lot of people versus having some people love you and some people hate you. All right. If, if you, the, the latter is, from a sales standpoint is far better. If you have nobody that hates you, then maybe you don't have anybody that loves you. And not necessarily has to be true, but generally true. You're not going to make many sales. Now, if you have some people that just are like, this is definitely not what I want. um, But then you have other people, you're kind of pushing away the people you don't want and pulling the people that you do want towards you. And then one more point about standing alone is that you're definitely going to want to have this if you're going to want to charge like some sort of premium pricing. Um, it, because if you are just like everybody else and their prices are lower than yours and it's basically looks the same to them and they, they want to work with you just as much as they want to work with everybody else, you're not going to, you're going to have more of like a Walmart low, you know, bargain bin, uh, type brand service offering or whatever. And that is not the way the position I want to be in. I want less clients at a higher profit. Uh, and so standing alone is super important to me. So I covered a lot of different things kind of jumped around there. You got any further, more comments on that? Fletch? No, I'm glad you did. Like actually one of the things you brought up was um, like, th- this isn't uh, like hypothetical. Like David said something along the lines of like, if I were going to do this again, I would do this like niche agency type. You're doing that at the moment. Yeah. Like this is, this is something you're actually working on actively, yeah. which is, um, building something that can occupy a space in someone's mind that nobody else occupies, mm-hmm. right? That's really what this is about. People might think of, oh, well, there's all these different ways that I can market my business online. But those guys, those, those guys only do SEO for electricians or whatever it might be. Yeah. Right? That was the example you used. So, well, how am I going to compare apples to oranges? Those yeah. guys actually, they're the only people doing this exact thing for me. Right. And so that's another element that you can add in here, which is, yeah, a lot of people do SEO or a lot of people do email copywriting or a lot of people do whatever, but we do it specifically for electricians or specifically for um, fishing guides or specifically for people that are looking to, uh, uh, you know, rent their house with Airbnb. What, yeah. There's tons of ways to do this. Right. And so spend a little time, but like David said, not too much. All you got to do is just get one way you stand alone. You don't want to be so completely different that people don't relate to you. Then yeah. you don't look natural. Then you don't really have a peep, a group of people that you can market effectively toward. So, and I think that brings us into the yeah. kind of the third 
bucket that you had, which is no broken windows and the first broken window. Let's talk about natural versus unnatural, but. Uh, well, do you want to talk about it? Cause I could, I could go on and on, but Me this too. is something that's fresh that, that you really wanted to make sure that we covered today. So yeah. like natural versus unnatural is huge. I, David launch into this and we'll, we'll yeah, there's a, the, yeah. man, this is something that David Mills brought up that I, I never really thought about. And the, the more I kind of mold on it and, and put different scenario sales scenarios up, against the wall with the, the frame of natural. Another way of looking at it is kind of congruency, like being congruent, which is sort of like being consistent. You don't want to be like, if you go to a meeting and you're dressed in a suit and the next time you go to a meeting, you're dressed in shorts, like kind of pick one or the other. It's kind of unnatural and it makes them not understand It's not the same, but it's, but anyway, so you want to, when you seem unnatural, it triggers something. I can't, I can't quite explain it. It triggers something in their brain that makes them not trust you. That's the best way I can put it. It makes them not trust that they can expect, know what to expect with you. And that they, there, there's some nagging thing in the back of their brain that says, I don't know what's going to happen. And when they don't, when, when you're trying to sell someone something and they're just like, wait, something is off it's going to be very hard to convince for them to get the justification part because there there's there, everybody has an experience of buying something they didn't like or having buyer's remorse and nobody and nobody wants to feel like an idiot nobody wants to feel buyer's remorse no one wants to waste their money even really wealthy people don't like wasting their money and so being seeming natural and congruent like it makes sense like it fits is going to be really important to not having a broken window because if you if you see how about let's, let's say this let's say you present yourself as an seo i present myself as an seo geek but then i say i don't know computers very well uh you know that's gonna be like really weird that's gonna be unnatural right i'm presenting myself as a computer geek and then i'm saying ah, i don't really like computers very much or i don't know computers very well well that doesn't make sense right and that's gonna make them they're just going to be like, well, if that doesn't fit, what else doesn't, it's, it's just going to bring up a whole other part of their brain that isn't even necessarily rational, but in a lot of ways it is rational because it just doesn't fit. I, I feel like I'm kind of struggling to, to, to put this into words. How would you put it? Yeah, there's a lot of different ways to look at it. But um, one of the things that I consider is like, I look at a scenario and if I'm reading a sales letter and the, the, the clarity of the offer is good, right? And I start reading it. And, um, you know, I began kind of seeing that I'm justifying like, oh, yeah, I really, I kind of do want to know search engine optimization at a, at a level that I can dependably, reliably accomplish it every time. And I keep going and I keep going. And I get to a point in the sales letter where there's a bunch of misspelled words and there's... Um, kind of weird injected code that's making some weird stuff flash. And the whole context is, Hey, we know computers really well. <laughs> yeah. That's I'm a like, better analogy. well, I, I'm not sure I can trust you anymore. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's not even that I can trust you. It's that I almost doubt myself. Right. Because I've kind of gotten a little bit swept up here. Mm -hmm. And now this thing came at me. And from that point on, you get in this category where it's like, mm, I got to scrutinize this a lot more, right? I kind of got a little pulled into it. And now I'm like, oh, well, now I'm just looking for other ways that you've disqualified yourself. And, you know, it, it, you, you don't have to be perfect, but you've got to stay above that threshold. And that threshold of natural versus unnatural of, um, you know, broken windows versus no broken wind, you know, it's different for every person there's going to be computer geeks such as yourself who would look at what I do on a sales page and be like, Oh, well, there's some things here that don't, they aren't perfect, but they're not enough maybe to take you out of immersion of the offer that I've got being able to deliver the results that you actually want. And so you've got to consider these elements in kind of the context of you don't want to take people out of immersion, right? Confusion, is one of those things that can take people out of immersion. So a broken window is opening up all these maybe side stories or analogies that take people out of kind of the main thread that you're helping them um, walk through to see what they're actually getting out of the content. 
out of the promise, out of the offer. So there's a lot of different ways that broken windows occur on the internet. The easiest, I guess, illustration or description is having some broken code or a janked up website or colors just being really off. But another thing that, that we kind of mentioned, you mentioned I'm doing SEO specifically for electricians. If the language that I'm using describing search terms to electricians don't match with the language they use, you're starting to disqualify yourself, mm. right? You're starting to um, display ineptitude and a lack of experience in communication with your market. And so broken windows are something you can look at through a lot of different kind of lenses and see different things. Language is big. Um, just kind of broken janky code. If we're talking about the internet, definitely big. Um, opening up a bunch of weird, completely unrelated or difficult to relate to stories or threads. Mm -hmm. Those are going to be something that takes the reader like, wait, where am I? I thought I was, I thought I was looking at the sales letter for somebody who does SEO for electricians and all your examples are talking about hunting and fishing. This maybe I'm not in the right place. Right. Mm -hmm. And you kind of give people, you get people in a place where they're a little more reserved, right. Where they're not just in it. And like, now all I'm looking, I really want this. All I'm looking to do is justify it. You've actually created a situation where they can't justify it with yeah. what you've been doing. Right. And so that's why this piece can completely ruin an otherwise great offer that maybe has great pricing and maybe you can do a super job for people. But if you take people out of that, you make them start to say, well, I'm not sure that I can justify working with these guys. You, you've kind of given up the, the game. Right? Uh, here's, here's an analogy. A really that, think about it like this. Think about it. If there was a, you were at a shopping center and there at the top of the, if there was a store there that said free money, but you looked at it and there was a bunch of jaggedy broken windows and it was dark inside. Would you go in there? For free money. They're offering you free money. So the vision is great. Who, wants, who doesn't want free money, right? But you're looking in there and go, something is wrong. I don't know what, but it, it's, it's something is wrong. And sometimes you know, well, it's the broken windows. That's clearly the clue that there's something going on, something shady going on there. But sometimes it's not quite so clear. Just a really clear example. I think that's why the no broken windows. So, yeah. you know, just if you were selling free money, let's say you really wanted to sell the free money, uh, you you fix the windows and now all of a sudden you've actually got people coming in the doors. Yeah. I um, mean, there's other ways in which you could have broken windows inside or whatever, but I think that hopefully that helps you kind of come up with scenarios like the, on here you have the list fletch, like just being incompetent. So if there are, there are a lot of ways in which you can be another way of putting this, I think would be like being uh, unprofessional in the ways that matter. There's some ways in which being unprofessional kind of is, is actually okay. Like it, like sometimes with some people, if you curse a little bit, that actually helps connect it's sort of like an us versus them. You can stay natural a little bit. Natural. Yeah. And yep. real, but also here's a way of being incompetent or unprofessional. It's like, okay, uh, I'll call you at two o'clock and then you don't call them or you call them at like two 30. Uh, that's really bad in my opinion. And I think there's a, that's going to turn off a lot of people and it's going to make you seem incongruent or unnatural or just really incompetent. And you're not going to seem like a competent business person. And that's really important for them to buy from you. Yeah, staying above that threshold in the important areas is huge. Yeah. Right? Not, you don't you don't want to come across as somebody who like lets one thing that's important take you completely out of the game. Especially little things like yeah. when you say you're going to do something for them, even if it's a really small thing and, and you're going to do it for them by a specific time, do the best you can to do it by that time. Um even if it's really small, I'm going to send you one sentence about your website uh tomorrow. Okay, do it. You do exactly that, right? If you send it the day after, even though it was really small, it might seem, eh, it's still, it's sending a signal of, it's kind of a broken window signal. And there's a, little, a lot of little things like that. Where well, and this is something, you, you, you painted this exactly. This is something that you can do where you promise them something very little mm -hmm. and you deliver it and you get more and more into this category. Of, oh, this is somebody I can depend on. Yep. Right. The, the, these can be used either direction. Right. Mm -hmm. If you screw one up, mm, you're, you're going to introduce problems. But if you realize this is an important thing and you just do it a few times, you're going to wind up 
getting the benefit of the doubt, so to speak, yep. in a lot of ways. So very, very important element. You cannot, you, the only way to do conversion right, and get a sale without thinking about this is to get lucky. Right. And you may put it together and get lucky, but then the next time it doesn't work. And now you're like scratching your head and saying, what the heck happened? Right. Yeah. This is something you got to pay attention. You just have to pay attention to it. Yeah. Um, so many scenarios. I don't think we can cover it all. Yeah. This, this is each of these could be like, I've got a whole note about almost all the line items and we've skipped over half the line items even today. <laughs> There's a lot here and it's not that you have to know everything. Right. It's just that I think about it because I work on the web and, and these are important elements. Like I don't always have the opportunity to talk, sit and talk to somebody that's going to buy something from me. Yeah. So the, the stuff I have on the web has to represent what it needs to represent without me being there to say, Oh, I, I didn't, I didn't explain that. Well, let me help you. Like, I don't get to do that. But also I think just being aware of this no broken windows concept you know, and, and there's going to be all sorts of different scenarios in your business when you're wondering, okay, I tried to make the sale and it didn't happen. And you're looking for why it didn't happen. Or you made a sale, you're compa maybe you're comparing the two, you made a sale and you're looking for what, why it did happen. You're going to apply this. And there's so many different ways it can apply. Um, yeah. Let's yeah. work on, let's go to context. The last one. on Yeah. Con so context is something also that, that some people almost exclusively talk about right and, and sell and develop <laughs> um you know the, the same as like kind of element two which you know some people are like all about brand there are other people that are just like oh it's all about story right all you got to do is tell a story and people will buy from you it's not exactly true stories can help and they can help immensely but what stories are in their essence is context and what it helps people do really when you either tell a story or you help flesh out a scenario that they see is appropriate to the thing that they're looking to buy, it helps them justify, right? This is the kind mm -hmm. of second element, this justification. Oh, yeah. Well, if, if I did, if I was, you know, out in the wilderness and I, I do like hiking and I do like going back country, and if I was out in the wilderness and I had that fire starter and, um, you know, I lost my matches and I lost communication and, the plane crashed that was going to pick me up and nobody else knew where I was. If I had that thing, I could survive and walk myself out. Right. Kind of going back to the illustration I had earlier. So with, with justification and with context and with story. So one of the things that I, I did quite a lot of, I say it did quite a lot of, I was, um, I was liberal with it. I was free with talking about the, what brought me into doing digital marketing, right? Which was, I had a brick and mortar business. I, I was doing construction. I was not getting a ton of phone calls. And I got to a place where, you know, the water got turned off. Like it was, it was a little dire. And I started learning about SEO. I joined um, OMG Machines. I learned things. I applied it. The phone calls started coming in. The whole situation turned around. And I was able to start selling leads to my subcontractors and then built an agency and all that. It's like, oh, well, I can see that happening. Mm -hmm. You've now helped me realize this is a natural situation. People do get into, they, they find a thing on the internet, they buy it. And there, there's a, a trajectory and a course that seems very natural that helps me say, ah, this, this thing is not as weird just because I've never done it before. There are other people who have done it that can help me understand their experience and how it works, how it fits into their life, how they've fit that into, you know, their customers' lives. This makes a lot more sense. It seems a lot more natural now. Stories can be incredibly powerful, incredibly immersive. But one of the core things they do is that. They help something feel natural because yeah, they, somebody's they, done it. Yeah, that's a good way of putting exactly what I'm about to say, which is like that helps them connect the dots from where I am today to the vision that you've painted to where they can say, okay, this can really happen. Especially it gives them a, a like if somebody else can do it, I can do it too uh, type of feeling. Um, this is just one stories are just one piece of the context too. To me, like the context is such a broad term. It's sort of like the broken windows. There's so many different pieces. You have to really try to get into the mind of your customer and think about, okay, how are they feeling? What are the situations that they're in right now? What have they felt like in the past? Where do they see things going in the future? 
with regards to selling SEO, I'm, I try to be very well aware of how people view SEO in general in the community as a whole and SEO companies. I always try to ask what their previous experiences are. Some people have been scammed by other people in SEO. And so you have to address that. You have to, I think actually we, we skipped over this in the no broken windows. And I think I want to come back to it because I think it's directly re relative, related to the context, which is you want to, if it's, if there's a potential trap coming up, you don't want to try to pretend like it doesn't exist. You want to address it. Um, and it may already be in the back of their brains or somebody else might bring it up. And if you did, if you're the one that brings it up, even if it is somewhat negative to your sales process, this is going to increase in terms of them seeing the vision, it's going to help increase the trust. And I think it could also, you get to control how that kind of conversation goes in their brain and you can, you can put it in a way that that kind of reduces the negativeness of that, of that. Uh, question or that idea and so that potential trap it's sort of like triggering the trap you know there's a trap coming up on your path you intentionally trigger it so you can control how it happens and have a much better chance of it not being really that bad for you so there's that context um, there's the context of this the the full breadth of the relationship you've had so far is it just have we just started talking for the first time today did we talk two or three times in the past? Like what was the nature of that, those conversations? All of the context there matters. What's the environment in their industry? What's the, you know, where does their industry growing? What are their fears? Maybe some industries they're like, we're afraid it's gonna disappear. Or maybe some industries like, we're exploding. Like those kind of contextual things are gonna really need, you're gonna need to take them into account when you're trying to make sales. So I wanna, I wanna so we, I mentioned going back to not addressing potential questions. What, what do you think about that? No, I, I loved how you, um, we talked a little bit before we started today. And that, that was a big thing that, that David brought up that he's mentioned here briefly, but being able to address these things that, that are likely in your, your potential customer's mind. And if they're not in the mind already, either you bring them up or one of their friends does. And or competitor or a competitor and of all of those choices, it's better if you do it yeah. for you. Right. So addressing mm -hmm. these things like, Oh man, I really don't want to talk about how long SEO is going to take. Yeah. So if you don't talk about it and mm -hmm. somebody else does, or if they think about it later, or if they're worried about it already, or if a competitor actually just addresses it, you now look like you're either incompetent to talk about the, the full experience of what you're doing or you're trying to hide something. And yep. as soon as you try to hide one thing, what else are you trying to hide here, right? And so yeah. kind of takes you out of the game a little bit. And so really considering the questions that, that your potential customer may have, is a, it's, it's a huge element for you to win, right? Because a lot of people don't do this. A lot of people don't wanna talk about some of the things that are, you know, kind of the crux, the, the difficult mm -hmm. piece of, I Pros guess, yeah. Pros and cons, right? SEO, one of them does cost some money, right? It's not the cheapest thing you can do. Other thing does take some time, mm -hmm. right? You're not going to get results tomorrow. So those two things, a lot of SEO agencies don't want to talk about it. If you do, now, you, now you're now you different. Yeah. Stay in that category of trusted. So people are not going to continue to be like, oh, what else are they hiding from me? They've talked about the two worst, you know, quote unquote, pieces of of this thing i might buy from them this is somebody i can i can feel a little more comfortable with also it's a clarity thing as you're yeah. as they are becoming your customer and if you haven't been clear about this the first couple months might actually be very difficult they might not last very long yeah. so you don't want to just get them to say yes if you're looking at big sales you got to get to them to say yes over and over again be it information yeah. products you want them to rebuy or a subscription service or seo service of some kind you know they got to keep saying yes essentially and so if you try to just get that first yes and then think that th now you're going to, they're going to stick with you forever, um, no matter what comes up, it's, it's just also, I, I don't know, to me, it's also kind of just like about integrity it, it, trying to be intellectually honest is something is a personal, you know, is something that is a personal, I don't know, the goal isn't the right word, but it's something I strive to be. I strive to yeah. with to all my interactions to stay people. above that threshold. 
Yeah. And yeah. I'm not perfect. I say things that maybe I, I, that I regret it's at times. Sure. I mean, I'm not yeah. perfect, but I really do make an effort to try to be honest about what the situation really is. And just confronting that is going to put you on the right side of a lot of the filters that, that a potential customer is going to go through. There are ways, there are some people who really are good at not do and not addressing this and it works for them. I think that's a lot harder. And I think it's also uh, unethical to in, in a lot of contexts. So it's just sort of more win. just, just if, if there's something that's potentially wrong, if there's a downside to your product or service, address it, come up to it. You know, it's okay. That's fine. Not everybody, ex people don't expect things to be perfect under all or else they don't buy, right? Nothing is perfect. And people know this in, in, uh, intellectually and instinctually. So you can, kind of come in you can understand this is the part of the context that even if they're not presented with it you're by anybody else then you still would have been better off presenting it to them because then now you seem like the expert like like fletch said you seem more like the person who really knows what's going on if you're the only person that presents this now on the flip side if you're the only person that doesn't present it then it makes you seem maybe dishonest or like you don't know what you're doing like fletch said so yeah yeah and it's you know just in general this is it's not as as much of a framework as it's something that you want to apply to all the stuff you're doing, right? You want it. You want to be mindful of clarity. You want to be mindful of broken windows. You want to be mindful of context. You want to be mindful of the justification and vision kind of path, right? These are things you don't like, Oh, I got clarity and now I don't have to worry about clarity because now right. I'm going to move on to being distinct. And it's like, well, if you're not just, if you're not clearly distinct, <laughs> that doesn't work, right? So these are just, these are things that really need to be applied to the way you're communicating with your, you know, the, the potential market for, for what uh, you're selling, you know, in one way or another. It, it, it's not a map and a framework and you just plug in the variables and then off you go. These are, these are very important things that you need to understand that you need to run, run on the way you're communicating with the people that, that are either going to buy from you or have already bought from you. Right. That's one of the things I think marketer we'll, we'll probably get into this, but like you alluded to, it's like, you need to not only get them to say yes once you need to keep getting them to say yes. And with SEO, right. We have a, a, a tend to have a monthly thing, right. we got to keep them over that threshold. We have to keep them saying yes. And so these things are applicable there as well. Right? How do I continue to justify spending this money even though I'm still not, not ranked, right? And it's like, well, the only way to do that is vision, right? If that vision is not compelling enough, it's, not, it, it's really like vision justification thing. What, what's going to justify me spending another couple thousand dollars this month? Well, it's the vision. It, it's mm. that I want to be in front of $10,000 a month worth of traffic or whatever it might be. Yeah. And so... You know, these are just really, I don't say high level, these are really integrated things that you need to consider with, with all of what you're doing with your marketing and customer retention, right? Business development in general. And don't expect to get this like overnight either. Like I still feel like there's some of these that in my business I could definitely work on. This is something, this is an ongoing process. Yeah. Yep. And I, I look at it a little bit like, a f like a frame or like a lens that you kind of look at, you, you got an idea that comes up to you and you want to look at it. Okay. Is this a good idea or a bad idea? And you apply these kind of, there's really kind of six things here. I guess huh. there's kind of yeah. two top high level things. They're not all, just, they're all kind of interwoven. So yeah. it's kind of tough to talk about them as a framework or as a outline or as a whatever, but these concepts, you have concepts, these concepts yeah. to these other things and you see what comes out the other side. Is this a broken window? Oh, does this really, is this really make, uh, make sense with the context that my customers are going through? Is this something that is going to hurt or help me stand with standing alone, et cetera, et cetera. Is this unclear? Um, and you know, the, 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 especially again, my, I think the starting point for all of this, if you don't have a compelling vision for where you're going to take somebody, then you don't really have anything to sell pretty much like that. That's there's, why would someone buy unless it's like, well, even then it's a compelling vision. I was going to say, unless it's like something they absolutely need. Well, then, yeah, they need it. Like you need it. Yeah, it's still a compelling, like all of this. appendix is about to burst. If you think you it doesn't exist and you bought something, 
it exists. You yeah, just need gonna, to understand it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Ed, so I really like your vision and justification because I think that one of the most valuable things you can do for your business is create a super compelling vision. It doesn't have to be compelling to all, all people, but something that, that you know people are going to be like excited about that want. And it doesn't have, to, again, it doesn't have to be everybody, a very specific set of people like with the electrician SEO. You know, if you, if basically the vision that, you know, would present to them just at a rough would be like, Hey, we can make you a bunch of money. It's basically kind of the, the gist of the vision. Yeah, that's cool. Um, right. That's right. Exactly. Bunch. Maybe it's that's a, a compelling it's vision. A million, maybe it's a hundred thousand. Who, yeah. It's like, okay, I, right. I, I'm still doing business cause I need more money or want more money. Right. That works. And then from okay. there, you probably want to work on the clarity of it and yeah. justification of like, okay, wow, really, what does that mean? Like, what was that? What's that going to look like? Okay. Well, right. What's that going to look like? Not just at the end, what's that going to look like along the way? And the more you can fill in those gaps and work on these things, I think this is a pretty like complete, like pretty much anything that comes has to do with uh, conversion is probably going to fall into somewhere in, 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 in what we're talking about here. Yeah. We can discuss um, most, most elements of conversion that I can think of through these areas, right? We, you think, we need to disagree with them. us. Feel free to send us a message and we'll- That'd be cool. Yeah, yeah. cuz I I love finding out when I'm wrong because then that means I can I can or, get to a place where I'm 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 less wrong or adding more clarity or in context. Sure. Yep. Yep. And uh and because we told you that that's important to us, it's important to us. It yeah, we uh, really mean that. So, I mean yeah, it, it truly. It, yep. This path, this journey, this life I'm on is it's I'm never going to it's a it's a it's a joyous journey of discovery. And I'm never going to discover it all. It's not possible. There's too much to discover. Uh, the set of things there are to discover grows faster than I could discover it. So that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. I embrace it. And so, yeah, a little bit off the top. Just but. hug it out. Hug it out, David. Yeah. Hug it. Embrace it. No, that's cool, man. I, um, this is such a big topic. We actually, um, we recorded this whole thing earlier. And we're like, ah. Uh, I, I was, I was like, I, I want to do that again. Like I, I want it to be a little more refined, a little tighter. Um, and, and in, in that way, you know, this is like, Oh, I want it to be a little more clear. Right. Yes. I, I don't want it to have some of the broken windows that it had before that would take yeah. people out of context or immersion. And I'm sure there's still tons, but there's less than there was the last time. I think this is, so this one was more clear yeah. on where we were going from the beginning while we were doing it. And, and now that we're, it seems like we're roughly at the end. I feel like the previous one, there wasn't necessarily wrong. It just wasn't quite as clear what, what was happening. It's kind of talking and, points versus, yeah. Yeah. I, I, hopefully it's really helpful. Yeah. Cause this is, I mean, a lot of this stuff I hadn't thought about until Fletch brought it to me and we started talking about it and I started kind of running my many sales experiences past it and going, oh yeah that makes a lot of sense. That actually is, is really true. And it's not just like, this sounds good. So, and we've never made sales before. Fletch and I have millions of dollars of sales experience, uh, like actually closing the deal. Uh, and so this is not just, please take, please really think about this, but don't expect to understand it overnight. It's something you're going to have to work with, let bounce around in your brain for quite some time. Yeah. This is again, you know, initial framework. Um, I got from David Mills, I'm talking like five, six years ago and I'm continuing to work on it. Right. When I, when I, when I realized this is such a, a, a really foundational understanding of what's going on. Um, I, I didn't want to reteach what somebody else had taught. I needed to understand it. And so what I did is I took kind of the original framework and, and kind of some of the talking points. And I, I literally put a question mark after each of the things that was like, clarity then i did question mark yeah, why is like clarity it. important mm. and that i had to build that myself i needed to build that myself yeah that's really this integration piece where oh now i truly understand and feel why clarity is important and it's fun right? and i it's, find it fun yeah it's, it's it this is i geek out on this this especially is especially if you like making sales yeah, which is, then, uh, I'm fond of that. Then it's, like, yeah, I'm also fond of that. <laughs> and so when you get kind of like those level ups where you're like, oh, wait, I see it now. I yeah. see under these contexts how if I had done this just a little bit different, the result would have been massively different. So it's like in terms yeah. of work put in, 
versus output of positive result. This is one of the most, from a business sales standpoint, this is one of the best things you can possibly do. Yeah. It, it's uh, a core of everything you'll do, um, yeah. especially online making sales. Yeah. This, this is, this will help you organize and put together all of your offers and how you talk about them. Yep. You know, if you totally. get traffic to this and you've got a product that works, now you got a thing that's, that's rocking and rolling. That's you all you need. You just gotta scale. You just gotta keep, gotta, keep being yep. disciplined and work on yep. what, and on scaling what works, yeah. Yep. And also, this is something that where, if you're gonna scale your business, you might have to train other people on how to make sales. Yeah. So if you don't really know how or why you're making sales, you're not gonna be able to help other people make sales. It's really tough to transfer that to someone else. Exactly. Yeah, this is, this, this, this you, can, you can apply this to your systems. Yep. Right. This is, if this is huge, right. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I agree. I'm pointing over here. I've got another monitor over here that I've got it down <laughs> on. I'm like, Oh shit, man, this is, this is good stuff. Right. Yeah. Um, so We're excited. Yeah. I'm excited about this. So let's wrap this up. I got to go do some stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> I think, I think we're coming to an end. So we'll thank yeah. you for listening. Um, and I don't know if you have any last words, Fletch, or you just want to send no, us I'm just excited to, to share and help people see some of the things that uh, I've been blessed, really, and fortunate to have been, um, you know, shown and taught over the years as well. So, um, you know, I appreciate this. And, and if you've got any further questions, you know, drop it to us. Uh, we'd love to explore and talk about this type of thing more often because this is really the crux. Crux meaning like the most difficult thing that a lot of people will encounter in their entrepreneurial life right? Understanding how to get that sale and be able to, to scale that. Right. And, um, I, this helps, right? This is, it's definitely better to be able to work with this than without it. So should awesome. be in good shape. Yeah. Well, thanks for listening and we'll see you on the next cubic liberation podcast.